Hi guys, welcome back to Pulling Bookshelf. Today I am reviewing Evan Winter's The Rage of Dragons. Um, my god, um, I'd seen plenty to suggest that this is an awesome book. I did not realize how awesome it was, even knowing that he originally self-published this and then a publisher picked him up and republished it and signed him for, I believe, a trilogy. I know there's at least three books. Um, third one's not out yet. But, um, first starting out, you know, I read about two hours, got about maybe a quarter of the way through um, when I picked it back up and started reading the next day. I basically couldn't put it back down until I finished it. Um, the world is awesomely built, even with very little actually described of the world. Um, the parts that are described are amazingly well done. But yes, with, with the world, um, there's the, oh my, am I saying that right? I need to make sure. They refer to themselves as the Chosen. Um, I believe it's the Omehe. Um, they fled their original homeland, fled across the country, uh, caught, nah, fled across oceans and landed in basically on a new continent. Uh, pretty much instantly ended up in war with the original habitats of the new continent they landed on. Has, um, obviously there are dragons in the world. Um, and the Omehe are able to essentially control the dragons and get them to fight for them which is suggested is actually why they had to flee their original homeland, because they brought up... It's not fully described as to how it happened, but essentially they believe because of the dragons, they started being hunted by something they call the Cole, who are immortal. Um, so it is based... Um, with the original generation that lands in the new world are scared of the fact that they're now having to use the dragons there to fend off the um, original inhabitants. And so... Ah, trying not to ramble too badly. Um, so they are worried about bringing the coal down on them in the new world. <laughs> um, they essentially tried to use the dragons to wipe out the indigenous people. Didn't quite go to that degree. They end up essentially thriving or semi-thriving as a new, new culture on the new continent except because they didn't really wipe out the indigenous people like they thought they were doing. There are constant war with them. Um, by the end of the book, we basically find out that the indigenous people are much larger of a society than Omehe ever even considered. Um, possibly to the point where the Omehe are probably going to be <laughs> driven off of this new home world. Has um, some interesting magic components, um, essentially to use magic in this world, you have to travel to basically like a shadow realm that's inhabited by demons that if they catch you, will tear you to shreds. If you're, and, and anybody in this world can travel to that realm, 
but only if you're actually drawing power from that realm can they harm you in the physical realm. Otherwise, they just shred you to pieces, which, because your mind is there, you remember that feeling. You literally live your death of being shred shredded by the demons. Plenty of people who end up doing that be basically go insane because they've literally lived through being shredded to pieces. Now, on the other hand, if you go to the Shadow Realm and are drawing on its power to use magic and the demons catch you, well, yes, your mind lives that the same as somebody not drawing the magic. The difference being that your physical body reacts as if you're actually being shredded to pieces. So you will actually die in the real world or in the physical realm as well. Which the, char the, um, the main character basically doesn't understand this. He's of a lower caste that doesn't really learn anything about the magic. Um, it's because of one of his friends who ends up being one of the gifted in other words, they're able to go to the Shadow Realm and draw power from it while hiding themselves from the demon so they have enough time to actually use the power. But so he learns all of this through them. Um, they come to find out how much of their society is not explained to them, seeing as how they were originally there. They are of the lower caste. Her not as much, seeing how she's considered gifted. She, she's the main reason why they learn a lot of the stuff that doesn't that they wouldn't have known otherwise. Um, definitely some twists and turns in there. Characters die who I would not have expected. Um, Evan Winter definitely had no qualms about killing off a character if it fit the plot. <laughs> um, I really can't re wait to read the second one. Um, I want to see where it's going because the book does end on quite a cliffhanger. They're they're based. They basically do manage to. broker a temporary peace with the, they refer to them as a Hidani. The Hidani themselves call themselves the Zidan. But, um, they do broker a temporary peace, but with the knowledge that the Hidani at the end of that peace have all plans to completely wipe out the Omehe. They they will they will not be happy unless every single Omehe in their lands are beheaded. <laughs> so it's definitely a bit of a cliffhanger, you know. They have to figure out a way to somehow either completely defeat the Zidan or figure out a way to appease them to keep from having all of them be hit. And currently the Zidan have the numbers to do as su do such. <laughs> um and it's an awesome book. Um oh, I should add the fact that while well, yes they were able to cross the oceans to get to the Zidan's land they don't have any way of getting back their ships. They they ended up having to um, scavenge their parts from their ship to <laughs> create their defenses to ward off the Zidane when they first landed. And all of the wood and their new land is much too brittle to make a ship out of that can survive crossing the ocean so they even if they decided to go back and fight against the coal and figure out a way to beat them 
or try and go to a completely different land. They can't. They have to... Currently, their only options are trying to figure out how to either defeat the Zaidan or coexist peacefully. Um, if you haven't read it, I highly, highly suggest this book. Um, It is amazingly written. Um, I do have to warn, there's definitely some names in it that are a little bit hard to pronounce. Um, if you're the type that odd names will pull you out of a book, I would consider listening to it instead of actually reading it. Um, I do know it's available on Audible, so there's definitely audiobook version of it. My God, amazing book. Um, very much action packed. <laughs> Please like, comment, subscribe, and till next time. Bye.